Three days before Christmas 1973, I was a young Decker learner, 16 year old. I sailed to go away for Christmas on a trawler called the Ian Fleming. Three days of steaming up to the Norwegian fishing grounds, we on Christmas day cut through the fjords. Uh, unknown to us at the time, it was compulsory to have a pilot, but the skipper didn't pick one up. Uh, we had a lovely Christmas dinner and then Christmas tea. Uh, I was asked to go on the bridge at uh, 7 o'clock on the night for a drink for the lads. It was a can of beer each. Uh, we was all down in the mess deck. Uh, I was sat there in a t-shirt and a pair of jeans, a pair of slippers. When the engine stopped, we could feel the ship coming round to starboard. And uh, there was a bit of a cheer, you know, if it had been Christmas night, take her in, let's have a party, you know, it's Christmas night. Uh, and about 30 seconds later, we was actually picked up by waves and smashed against Haverson Mountain at 10 past 7, Christmas night, 1973. Uh, we all go up onto the boat deck. Uh, you can imagine great seas coming over the ship. Uh, the lights were still on at the time. We, there was sheer, sheer panic for a young 16 year old. It was terrifying, you know, when you look up to grown men who were screaming and crying for the wives and that. Uh, that trip had bought a big Gansey woolly jumper. Uh, when we'd been in just a t-shirt, it was snowing. You can imagine, you know, there was ice everywhere. I'd lost my slippers by that time. I'd run, uh, I went down in, back into the accommodation to get the jumper. Uh, back up onto the deck and uh, there was attempting to launch two life rafts, screaming, then the lights went out. That, for me, I thought, this is it. You're not gonna get through this at all. Uh, we abandoned ship into two life rafts. Uh, but unfortunately the uh, life raft with the skipper, the mate, the radio operator, engineer and two deckhands overturned again the ship uh, where they was all thrown into the sea. Tommy Cowden, one of the crew members, actually got swept back aboard the Fleming on a wave and he made his way to the bridge. Uh, we drifted, we cut the life, uh, the painter from the life raft, we drifted for a couple of hours in mountainous seas. Uh, I'd just finished Decalena College School, you know, for my certificates, and uh, I let the flares off, the youngest man aboard. Some of the crew didn't know how to, there was old hands. Uh, they hadn't been through all this training where I had. We was later picked up by fishing boats from Havis the port of Haversund. Uh, this time last year, from Hull I went on a cruise on the Astoria to Norway to meet with the Museum of Haversund and the Norwegian government where they presented the life raft from the Ian Fleming. This, this life raft was taken from the vessel which uh, sank on the 5th of January, uh, 10 days after the grounding. Sadly that night we lost three great men Dennis Colby, engineer, the radio operator, who I owe my life to, he got the Mayday call out, and Terry Day, the mate. Three great men from Newington Trawlers. Three great respected men. This is the uh, manifest, shall we say, an A4 piece of paper, what we had to sign. It was Christmas night, everything closed down, especially in northern Norway. There was no fax, there was no mobile phones, there was no internet. This is what where we wrote our names to say who lived and the three men's names at the bottom who sadly perished in the cold water. They had life belts on, they died because of the cold, not drowning. <coughs> uh, we was put into hospital for uh, two or three days and we was flown back into England on the 28th of uh, December 1973. That night I met with my family, got on, met with a family and we went out, uh, went out for a drink. I know I was young and I shouldn't have been in the nightclubs. I made my way to Scans. <laughs> Although we was young in age, we was men because you know we was doing a man's job. Any trollman who'd ever sell out the 
port of all, you know, there was all good men. Uh, I remember being at the bar with a pint in my hand and I uh, remember seeing my friend, Carl Strake, had come running down at me when he saw me. Come on, he said, all the girls are in uh, in the corner from the one you from Hesel Road, the fishing community. Everybody knew everybody else. Uh, so we had a great night and Carl always told me I was his hero, I, you know, I was his age. I'd survived a major tragedy. Uh, straight after New Year, we had to go to the Board of Trade Inquiries in Poston Gate. Carl used to meet me there in the morning. We used to go through all the government rigmarole of how the, you know, why the ship was uh, lost. The skipper eventually got his ticket suspended because of his actions that night when he should have had a pilot. Uh, soon as that had finished, when me and Carl, I, I was on survival pay, I didn't have to go back to sea straight away. But on the 12th of January, 1974, me and Carl was on the dock. A troller called the Hammond Innes, skippered by Billy Brattle, was sailing. A couple of my friends was on it. So I went aboard for a can and I had a talk to the lads. And uh, while we were sat in one of the berths, one of the crew says, uh, the deck Elena hasn't turned up. So my mate, Kate Bradshaw, said, come on, Joe, get on, let's go see what's happening on the deck. We went up onto the deck. We saw the skipper on the quay with a runner looking at his watch because the ship had to sail. Uh, we went down the gangplank. Kate said, Jerry's deck Elena in the company. He was in the Fleming. Brettle went, what? He said, yeah, he's in the Fleming. He said, look, Tell the declarer, who is late, to find another company. He do not work for this company no more. They sent me home in a taxi to collect all me, uh, what I had sea gear at the time, because I'd lost it all in the Fleming. Uh, the taxi took me to Corporation Pier, and they took me out in a boat where the Amandinis was waiting in the river for me to get aboard. Uh, we sailed in the Amandinis. Now then, it was a state-of-the-art top trawler with a top skipper. You couldn't ask for more. It was like winning the lot. Today's equivalent of winning the lottery. Uh, we did 19 days to the Malangan Bank on Norway. We landed four and a half thousand kit, which was double what any trawler used to land in them days. And we broke the port record. We landed on the 3rd and the 4th of January. When I was on the ship, back to when we was on the dock and they sent me in the taxi, I shook Carl's hand. I said, I'll see you later, mate, I've got to go. And he understood, he'd have done the same. Anyhow, where, as I say, we landed on the 3rd and the 4th, and we found out that the ship had a few teething troubles, so we'd be home a week, which was thankful, because we'd made a vast amount of money. Uh, so on the 8th, we heard about the gold going missing, and on the 9th, on the night time, I was back in Scamps with all my friends, and I saw a bit of a disturbance at the bar so I went over uh, when I got there Carl's girlfriend was there crying and screaming Carl Carl so I thought something had gone on in the club so I said to her what's the matter with you she said Carl's in the goal I said you kidding me no 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 don't say that although I'd sailed on the 12th of January in the Amandinis Carl went on to sail on the 21st of January in the whole troller goal and we all know on the 9th of February she was more or less de declared a total loss 36 crew you know when you talk about when people think that you're a hero Cal will always be my hero he, sacri he had the ultimate sacrifice I was one of the lucky ones to come home but uh, I've uh, donated this to the Heritage Centre the families of the lost trollmen have been the three lost trollmen have been to see it, and it brings a you know it's it's all we've got of the Fleming to uh, remind us of that tragic night in 1973.